Hey, welcome to another episode of At the Table with Patrick Lencioni, where everything we talk about is related to changing the world of work so that more organizations can be more effective and less dysfunctional, and employees can be more fulfilled and less miserable. I'm your host, Pat Lencioni. I'm with my co-host, Cody Thompson. How you doing, Cody? Doing great. Great to have you here. We've got Tracy, our producer on mic. Hi there. Hello, Tracy. We love to have you on mic. And we've got Matthew, our engineer, not on mic, although we're buying more mics, so... Matthew's going to start weighing in more because he always has funny comments for us. All right, t- Cody, what's today's topic? Well, we, we did it again. Efficiency sucks. Take that, Tracy. Right. <laughs> That's right. I, I and approve. you're on mic. I approve. I approve. <laughs> efficiency sucks. And so efficiency doesn't necessarily suck. But then again, it kind of does. Because what I mean is that too much emphasis on efficiency is a killer, a murderer of effectiveness and of joy and innovation and productivity. And yet in most companies and most organizations, in most schools, even in families, we naturally drift toward efficiency as a good thing. And then we watch as morale and joy begins to fade, which inevitably downstream leads to a decrease in productivity. So we go back and push for more efficiency. But what we really need to do is to stop and understand that it's effectiveness that is what we want. And that's what we're really after. And Asking for more and more efficiency destroys our ability to become effective. It's more of an art than a science, and that's what we want to talk about today. It's something we're really passionate about, and it's something we've been experiencing lately in a lot of different ways. Yeah, what's so interesting is I remember getting hired six years ago, and you, you've been, you say this all the time, effectiveness over efficiency. And when I first got here, I, I actually don't think I understood what you meant, because the whole world is tilted into the direction of efficiency. Absolutely. You know, and, and so we'd have these conversations and it felt like we were kind of being indulgent. Like maybe we're taking too much time. Maybe we should go get stuff done. And, and there is this constant gravity to be efficient. And it wasn't until, you know, a a year or so in where I'm like, actually, no, there, there is definitely something to this that if we take the time to actually be like effectiveness and keep our, our thought and focus on being effective, sometimes Efficiency is a blocker to that. In fact, many times it many is. Many times, yeah. If you're, if you're not wasting time, you're not saving time ultimately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you're wasting on stupid things. But if you're not doing things at times where you can't calculate the ROI and you actually feel like this might seem a little indulgent, that is actually necessary for achieving the most you can achieve. But it's hard for people to get their heads wrapped around. That. One of the primary feelings we have, and Tracy, we just had this conversation, is that you feel guilty. Like yes. it, you actually collectively feel guilty because we're taught so much that efficiency is the goal that when you're not being efficient, you're like, oh no, we, we start to panic. We start to go like, oh, we should cut this meeting shorter or, oh, let's go get some actual work done. Have mm-hmm. you, how many people have said that? Well, and that happened to us just yesterday, right, Tracy? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We were, we were actually, we came into the conference room and we were going to plan the podcast and we literally spent two hours talking about our listeners. We didn't plan the podcast. We actually stepped back and we had one of the most interesting conversations we've had in a long time. We talked about you guys. Right. The listeners. Yeah. The listeners. Matt was like going through all the, the, the information he gets and the feedback from listeners. We were talking, well, who are they and how do we speak to them in a better way? Great conversation. And at the end of it, Matt and you said what? Yeah. Matt felt guilty. Yeah. At the end of the day, you guys had left and he said, oh my gosh, I feel so guilty. We didn't get anything done. And I said, are you kidding me? We got a ton done. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm a full convert of this concept. Yeah, because you're, you're a very efficient oriented I, person. Uh, my personality leans in that direction, but I am a convert. I fully believe that this is the way just to be effective, to be messy, to waste time. I, I have to say, even though I'm, I believe this and I say it, I also feel guilty. Mm-hmm. So it's even for me that you know, we're raised in school and at home when we were kids, like don't waste time, do things, yes. be productive. And so when it comes to those moments where when we're indulging an interesting conversation that's tangential, slightly related to what we're doing, I always feel like, oh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm driving these people crazy. Yeah. And yet it's critical. When, and I was trying to even think about this as a picture, like on a graph, you know, like there is a diminishing marginal return on efficiency. And yeah. so b- basically you have to figure out like, what is the line? Where does it get to where we have just enough efficiency to support what we're doing and no more? You should, yeah. mm-hmm. you should like stop it right there because- any more than that starts to, you know, the reason we felt guilty yesterday is because we we're like, we have to get this podcast to the mm. editor so that he, he can give it back to us so we can post it on Wednesday morning. And it's like, 
we actually had a conversation that is going to make our whole podcast experience moving forward, I think, better. And that right. we have a better idea of who, who we're speaking to and how we, what, which ones are good and which ones did we, you know, we looked at all, all sorts of things that inform this. But from an efficient standpoint, we, you know, we, we weren't. And we we're, we're not saying effective. that there's no room for efficiency in the world. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you've got to be, but anything above the what's required is actually bad because it destroys our ability to come up with new ideas and to do things better. Because it's better to do something a little later with higher quality than to hit your time marks and always have them declining in quality. Right. But mm-hmm. so many organizations I deal with measure things in terms of, did we do it on time and did we not waste any time? And, and it's like, but your numbers are going down and the effectiveness of your organization is decreasing. But the idea of them actually leaning into the fact that, that it's okay to be inefficient is really hard, even when they can see that they're, that they're starting to, to struggle. I know. And, and I think that the p- part that I, I imagine as listeners are hearing this, they're like, there's some dissonance, like, no, that can't be right. You know, like <laughs> that I'm fighting against this, but there really is like, it's because the world rewards efficiency more than it rewards effectiveness. Like we have created that in our schools, in our workplaces. It's about how much you get done. We talk about how busy we are. And a totally different question would be like, hey, how effective are you at work versus how uh-huh. busy are you at work? Yeah. And again, I, I want to say it again. It's not that there's not room for that. In school, if you got to teach kids to get work done, you got to give them a work ethic. But there's a point at which you go, I think they figured that out, but they're not grasping the full concept. Mm-hmm. I'd rather slow down and try new things and waste a little time to get them really interested in it than continue to just beat that same drum. Now let's talk about this in the most practical. So what do you do about this and what does this mean? Mm -hmm. So I was with an organization last week, a great organization. And yet what I learned was that there was some morale problem and it was because they're very structured and efficient. They work really hard, but the people that were working hard weren't getting as much done as they wanted and they weren't terribly happy in that. And I was shocked because every member of the team had really in-depth understanding of what the organization did. I was super impressed by it. But one person in tears said, listen, it kind of sucks right now. And, and she's not doing anything out of passion. She's just in her box doing her thing. And I said to the team, I said, you guys, we don't do this here because we already kind of live this way. I said, you guys need to start spending 15% of your time doing something that you find interesting. Mm -hmm. whether it's outside of your job responsibilities or not, I'd like it to be relevant to what we do here generally, but don't overthink it. If you're not wasting 15% of your time on just doing something that interests you, you're not going to love the rest of your job. And we're going to be deprived of some great ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about that is, you know, we even wrote wasting time on the board, but the idea that we have to consider it as a waste of time, because it's not that it's like, a great use of your time to do this. <laughs> and you know why I say it, Cody, is because I want them to, to realize, because they're going to go- Give them permission. Right. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they can't calculate the ROI of it. Mm-hmm. And you know, this came from years ago, the 3M company, which is the mining company in Minnesota, they had a policy that now all companies are doing as kind of a gimmick. And this is not a gimmick, but they said, we want you spending a portion of your time doing something innovative. We don't care what it is. And of course, the story about Posted is there was a guy and he, he did music at his church, but they could never get, the pages were always falling. So he said, I'm going to take some of this adhesive that we have here and put it on something just enough to where it sticks, but it can come off. Yeah. And he did it for his music at church. And that's how Post-it notes came about. So a mining company makes Post-it notes. Exactly. <laughs> right. And the point is, let people innovate. Now, the, the reward for this isn't some amazing billion dollar breakthrough. The reward is that your people are going to actually feel fully utilized and they're going to have the freedom. See, efficiency is the enemy of freedom. And they're going to have the freedom to do things that they find interesting. Not only are they going to come up with new ideas, but they're going to, they're going to stop dreading the other things that they do, which aren't really dreadful in themselves. They're just like, can I at least use some of these other curiosities right. I have? And just explore. Because right. Because the efficiency, you know, not prison might be the wrong word, but the box that you're put in, it's just like you go in and you crank and it's all about output. And, and it really effectiveness is about input and mm-hmm. maximizing output, you know? Exactly. So what this all comes, comes from or comes down to is this concept called 
Theory X and Theory Y. And I can't remember the guy's name who came up with this. It was like 70, 80 years ago. It, it's Douglas McGregor. Douglas McGregor. That's right. I remember learning this once yes. in school. And McGregor said there's two different theories of management. And one is Theory X, which is you have to control people. Mm-hmm. You've got to know what they're working on. You've got to stay on top of them. And you don't want to give them any latitude because they're going to take advantage of it. And Theory Y says, no, people want to do the right things. So give them freedom mm-hmm. and they'll actually do what you need them to do better and go beyond. Mm-hmm. And, and this is still today the thing that we have to ask ourselves. And both of the way we parent our kids and the way we manage people in our companies and the way we look at ourselves. And that is giving people freedom and latitude to explore. Is that going to hurt productivity or help it? And it will almost always help it. And yet we almost always choose the opposite. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. I, I think it goes back to like what we reward and talk about, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's like I, I just had, you know, we just got through Christmas and like, you know, all the commercials or all the movies where it's like Santa's elves are making toys. And at the end of the day, they're like, how many Etch-a-Sketches did you make? <laughs> and it's like, they mark it out. And the person who makes less Etch-a-Sketches or the elf is the one that they're like, oh, you need to step up your game versus... Or they kill them. The elves get their <laughs> little heads chopped That's off. That's a little different uh, movie than the one I saw. I have a two-year-old, so we don't yeah, do... Yeah. Yeah. But it's true that more often than not, it's about we're measuring like, oh, so tell me what it is that you got done. Right. You know, yes. instead of, hey, tell me how you thought about how you make this better. Or, right. or did you figure out a new way? Or did you spend some time thinking about what we need as a result instead of going straight to our calendars? and. And you know, what's interesting about this is you've said in the past, I don't know that we've, I don't think we've talked about it on the podcast, but your posture at work being either, you know, reactive. So if I come in and I, I open my, up my email, mm-hmm. my posture is immediately, I'm going to be efficient around my that's emails. Right, I'm right. going to get this out. Which is almost always ineffective. Right. And that's too many people just go get to work, open their laptop, and then your, your schedule, your calendar, and your emails are dictating what you do versus... If you leave your laptop closed and start to think about, that's like a really snapshot of effectiveness versus efficiency, right? Yeah. Like, do mm-hmm. I open my email and go right to work or do I take five minutes to figure out how to organize my day and be effective? You know, and, and this comes back to that whole idea. It's not a gimmick and it's not, and, but some companies need to go, I want to give you 15% of your time, which might be like four hours a week or mm-hmm. something like five hours a week. But for us, we've never formalized it. We're not like that. We've just always said to people, if you're interested in something, do that. Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking about this over the course of our, when you first got here, Cody, you and a group of friends were starting a company. Mm -hmm. And you said, I feel really bad because, you know, you guys have hired me, but I have this side company. And I said, no, you know what you should do? You should work on it when you're at work Mm -hmm. because then we can know what you're working on. It'll be fun. And maybe we can help with that and you'll feel more fulfilled and you can probably understand our concepts better. Absolutely. And you did that. We, it was fun for us. You just worked that much harder for us. And it didn't make you, it didn't detract from your passion for what we did. It actually allowed you to have more freedom. And, and the truth is, is I got to see, because I was part of the leadership of the founding of that company, that I got to see how our stuff worked in real life more quickly. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I was, I was. In fact, you've used that, the examples from that business on these, this podcast yeah, a exactly. lot. exactly. And, and the fact that you, you're right that we have a culture where this is not a, we don't have to say like, hey, take a half day right now and do this because we've built this into the fabric, but there are too many jobs out there where that's not true. And in fact, you were surprised that we were like, it's yeah. not only okay that you do it, we'd like you to share it with us. Yep. And Tracy, we were talking about yours, you know, and it's like, how did Tracy do that? And Tracy's a grinder. I mean, Tracy works her tail off, but. The thing, when something comes up here that Tracy's naturally good at, we moved offices a few years ago. Now, Tracy has been our CFO, our CAO, the, the <laughs> editor of my books. I mean, done a bunch a of things. A little bit of everything. But she loves, and she has a great knack for decorating and design and, and look and feel of things. So she was the designer of our office. Mm-hmm. Now, it would have been so easy for us and to go, Tracy, we're, we're outsourcing that. Mm-hmm. That's not what your job is when you, but it was a blast. I loved and, it. And when you, people come into our office, I love to brag, Tracy designed this. <laughs> yeah. And it was fun and it fed into what, what I love to do. It was so perfect. And it gave me energy from, for all the other stuff I, I was doing here. And then I didn't think I had an example and Tracy reminded oh, me. Yeah. So I actually started a second organization with a dear friend. We, we launched a company that was around serving churches. Cause I was working here and I was like, Oh, I have this passion for churches. 
and and you guys said, well, just do that. Mm-hmm. And it's a separate company, but I, I am involved in it. And I spend at least 15% of my time doing it, but it gives me an outlet mm-hmm. to where it makes me more productive and more driven for what we're doing because I have that opportunity to do that. Right. And again, it goes back to the idea that it's, it, we don't need a post-it note at the end of this to prove that it was <laughs> meaningful or that it, you know, you do that because it, it gives you an outlet to work on things that you want to do. Right. And so it gives you life and energy and fulfillment. And so you can come back and do the things that you do for us, the other 85%. And, of the and they're, they're all related to our work. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. how much have we learned about this business by me doing that? Mm-hmm. Oh, a huge, uh, it's been huge. So we're not saying like, you love golf. You should go golf five That's hours right. a day. I mean, a week. I mean, it's like. Matt's over there like, I'm going to bring my PS5 in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point is there's passions that people have that aren't directly related to their role. Let them explore those in the context of work and it will benefit your company in crazy and amazing ways. Right. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to if that feels foreign or like it's going to be a waste of time, it's because the the scales of work are so tipped into efficiency mm-hmm. that climbing your way out of that is going to feel foreign. And let me tell you how this applies in, in family life too. My wife, we have four boys and she does Bible study and all these different things, but she works like nose to the grindstone in areas that aren't necessarily her passion because she has to keep the house running and do all this stuff. And God bless her for that. But if she's not indulging a few of her curiosities around work, over the years, she's done this, and there have been times when five years would go by and she doesn't do it at all. Mm-hmm. Her, she burns out, and I come home, and she's like, I just have no energy for this. Mm-hmm. But when she's doing something like that's, it, for her, it would be creative. For somebody else, it might be. She is like, oh, no, I get things done here so much faster because I know I'm going to get to do some of those other things, too. Yeah. So this is actually a very practical, countercultural way to increase productivity and morale in an organization. And what I would suggest people do is sit down and say, if I let you do something that wasn't completely within your job description, but it was somehow related to what we're doing here, what do you think you would do? Right. Mm -hmm. And brainstorm with them. And it's not all going to be a post-it note or coming up with a new idea. It might be, I'd love to just call customers and talk to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean, and so if I could just spend four hours a week, just calling customers and asking them about something, it's like, and most CEOs, most leaders, would go, that would be cool. Yeah. Give them that permission. Again, mm-hmm. it's not something like, I want to start painting. And there are companies <laughs> that do that, you know, and yeah. I just think that's, that's a little gimmicky. Just say, why don't you just exercise your curiosity in the context of what we do? And that'll be a blast for you. I think it's a great call to action. And one of my favorite things is when we, were, we had that conversation, the effective but inefficient one about the podcast was, hearing all the stories Mm -hmm. and hearing who the people that are listening to this, you guys who took, take these suggestions and then go implement them and hearing the ways that people are like, man, that worked. And so I just, I, I got off the podcast and I went and did this thing and here's, here's our story. You know, we actually have one and Tracy, is this, you is this my cue? Yes, to, yes, uh, all right. I love it. <laughs> we get so many amazing emails, like Cody said, and we received one this week from Alan and Alan listened to our blind spot episode. And he decided to get his team together and come up with rapper names for everyone. And the team was slightly terrified because it's, <laughs> it's sort of risky, right? To come up with these rapper names. But well, when and you he, pitch it like, hey, we're based on this podcast, <laughs> we're going to give each other names about the way that we show up that we're not, we're not intending. You know? Exactly. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's scary. scary. That's yeah. very scary. So anyhow, Alan sent us an email with his entire team and their rapper names. And it was just so What are cool. some of the rapper names? So Theirs creative. were better than ours, I think. Oh, th- <laughs> these are all better than ours. So one of them is, let's see, Stubbs. Comes across as being stubborn rather than open to new ideas. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's so good. Lil Pain, causing others pain and being too aggressive in getting things done. But wow. and think about the humor that is in that. And when somebody goes, hey, Stubbs, yeah. they're like, yeah, okay, I'm being stubborn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, I love that. Yeah. AK short comes across as, sh- as being short with people instead of engaging. Mm. So su- such creativity and, and brutal honesty. Wasn't I mean, Alan's like a B pops or yeah, something? Dr. B pops comes across as a bubble popper, not celebrating little things. And this is the leader. Yeah. That is so cool. And he's sending this to us because when you put humor in there and you do it all together, you don't feel like people are criticizing you. They're actually helping you. That's yeah. right. Remember we talked about the coaching thing? It's yes. like, these, this is how they're going to coach. 
What a great thing when somebody says, hey, B-pop, Dr. B-pop, you're popping my bubble here. You're going to give me any love? And then he's like, hey, man, I'm sorry. And they laugh versus people that sit there and think, can I tell the boss that he's not acknowledging what I do? No. Totally. That's right. Well, and, and I love that because they were le- there was some trepidation and a little bit of fear like, could this go mm-hmm. poorly? And I was talking to one of our listeners, Kevin, the pastor that we read his testimony the other day about the working genius. And he... And one of the things he said to me, which I love, is like, we, we always try to make sure you guys know that this isn't like Disneyland. We don't think we're, no. we're, we're better at this or mm-hmm. really, we'd, we're constantly refining this. But he's like, the idea that you can paint a picture of a place where you can say these types of things to one another and, and have these types of conversations. And it's true. It's not just us. Like other people, like I love this email because it means that like, people are working towards this, everything that we say in the opening of this podcast. So people are more fulfilled at work, that they have dignity in their jobs and that they can show up and be them themselves. Fully. And you know, I want to tell people, when you share your ideas, we read them all. Mm-hmm. And we love it. We don't always get them on the air, and we're going to be better about doing that. We're going to take a period of time at the end of each of our podcasts and just say, here's some of the cool things that you guys have sent yeah. us. We're going to get better at that, and Matt's going to hold us accountable to that. But And where do you send email to? Podcast at tabledgroup.com. Podcast at tablegroup.com. So anything you've done. And I will say this, I'm going to G everyone, if you listen to the podcast, on the galvanizer and the working genius model, but one thing we need from you guys or that we'd ask of you is go on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast and rate and review the podcast. Like this is, this is something that we look at. We love, we love to get that feedback. And it really helps other and, people find the podcast right. too. And ultimately that's what we want. We want more and more people to experience what we're, you know, the goal that we're set out is dignity and work and, and the stuff that we talk about here. So if you haven't done that, we'd love for you to just take Two minutes, go out there, give us a star rating, and then and then review the podcast. Yeah, and if you do that, let us know. Or if you can, you know, tell five friends about our podcast, let us know. We will send you a handy dandy at the table workbook. No, 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 book. notebook. No There's no work in it. Just, no, just, right, just notes, notes <laughs> notebook, just lines and pages. <laughs> and we really appreciate that. So we we love our listeners. Okay, I think that's it for this week. We will look forward genuinely to our next at the table podcast. We'll see you then. God bless.